Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to Balance of Nature for Negroes Part 2. Remember, the Almighty has in His infinite wisdom and boundless beneficence hidden from us many things, a knowledge of which would doubtless injure us, and the origin of the human races belongs to this catalogue. J. H. Van Every, Medical Doctor, 1861 and this is from the book Negroes and Negro Slavery, The First and Inferior Race, The Letter, Its Normal Condition, published 1861. And from Harry S. Truman in 1960, you don't set a fox to watching chickens just because he has a lot of experience in the hen house. And this very simply explains and condemns the slave master's technique of putting his slave hunting accomplices in positions of authority in the countries that make up what was Negro land and Guinea, in a place like Nigeria, in a place like Cameroon, in West and Central Africa to be precise, the slave master ensures that his slave hunting accomplices are the rulers there and that is why no progress can be made there. And here is a shout out to our Patreon subscribers, YouTube members and donors we want to say a very big thank you to you for your support. Thank you very much. Institutionalization of the slave trade. Do you know any institution, whether at present or in history, that was created by the Negroes? If not, have you wondered why the Negroes are forced to identify with and stay only in institutions created by the slave master and his accomplices for them? The government? the judiciary, religions, academic, cultural, name it institutions are all created by the slave master in Western Central Africa to be precise and Negroes are forced to join them and must be led by what the slave master refers to as superior races, albeit falsely and ignorantly. And this is why the slave master is doing all he can to destroy the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, the same way he did to the Universal Negro Improvement Association of Marcos Gavi, and even the Black Consciousness Movement of South Africa when it was under Steve Biko. And remember, IPOB is a group that are struggling for freedom from the slavery of one Nigeria created by the British as a replacement of the slave trade which was actually replaced by what the slave master called colonialism. Slave master's effort to destroy the indigenous people of Biafra IPOB. When the agitation for Biafra freedom gathered momentum through IPOB, the slave master deployed all known subterfuges against the movement but failed. Then he came up with groups like RIPOB and NIPOB and created leaders who claimed to have expelled Namdekano, the leader of IPOB back then. For those who have been following the trend, you may remember when they did that. He also went after Radio Biafra by writing transmitting companies in Europe to stop carrying the Radio Biafra signals, but all those efforts failed. The slave master also tried to attack IPOB finances by falsely accusing the IPOB leader of corruption and buying expensive wares, all in a bid to discourage IPOB family members from paying their dues in IPOB. And above all, if you follow the slave master's propaganda outlet and fake news media called the BBC, you will remember when they claimed that Uche Mefo and Asari Dokobo had established Biafra de facto customary government which was also designed to see if they could dissuade or somehow deceive those who were looking for freedom under IPOB from doing so, which is similar to when he tried to create ROIPOB and NIPOB just to destroy IPOB, and above all, when he tried to see how he can stop the IPOB members from contributing funds because he could not defund the movement. He started looking for ways to use the authorities or the officials of IPOB to destroy it and this was why you can see from their fake news media called BBC Ibo News. He says Uche Mefo, the former deputy of IPOB who they forced to start working for them could stop people from paying their dues. Remember, 
The essence is to see how they can starve IPOB of funds so that Rodeo Biafra can close and then the movement can stop. And this is why on this BBC Ebo News, it was saying that Uche Mefo had the power to stop people from paying their dues. Now ask yourself, why would an association that is on its own looking for freedom in the most genuine of ways be forced to stop paying their dues? Have you ever taken time to think about it? That's because the British has in them that inherent desire to met out evil against the Negroes. They cannot do without it, unfortunately. It doesn't matter whether you believe us or not. The British are the ones responsible for all the killings you see going on there. If you doubt us, conduct your research. And you can very easily see that this news was dated 30th November 2020. It was after all these failed that they went ahead to kidnap Nam the Kano. Remember, the only reason they kidnapped him was because he was seeking freedom. And to the British, as an article of faith, the Negroes were created to be slaves forever. Simon Hipper as an agent of the slave master. The latest effort of the slave master to destroy IPOB is by using an impostor called Simon Eba. Remember, Simon Eba is not his real name. This he started by planting Simon Eba to start making online broadcasts supporting or pretending to be supporting Biafra Freedom and the Nam Kano. And the slave master also donated the sum of 100,000 United States dollars to IPOB through a woman called Riteze in the plantation now called United States of America, also known as Madame Oyibo and used that to infiltrate IPOB. So ideally, what the slave master did was to find a willing tool in that woman, gave her 100,000 United States dollars, and told her to make it as a donation to IPOB. So that deceived Kano to think that the woman was genuinely supporting the movement without knowing that she was sent by the slave master to come and infiltrate the movement. And aside the evil seeds sowed by the slave master, the plan was simply to kidnap Nam the Kano, plant his agent, Simon Eba, as the propagandist in Radio Biafra, and perhaps install Kano Takano as the leader of IPOB, and subsequently use both of them to destroy the movement entirely. And so, permit us to ask you, have you wondered why Simon Eba blackmails both IPOB, its leadership, and then Nam the Kano, if he was not an agent? Remember, the blackmail may be subtle, remember the subtle beast code, and many may not know. And do not forget that asking the British to desist from the slave trade and other forms of man's inhumanity to man on the Negroes is like asking a female prostitute to stop having sex, but still remain a prostitute. And in the event you are still in doubt that Simon Epa is an agent of the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices, why did he lie that he is a lawyer when he is not? Why is there no record of any school he attended? At least anybody would be proud to tell you the school he attended and got his law degree from. Why is he unable to reveal such information? That's because he is not a lawyer and his real name is not what he is using. And how did the Nigerian media know that he is a lawyer, a prince and a military as well as a replacement for Namdekano on Radio Biafra as soon as Namdekano was kidnapped? How could they have known all those information way ahead of anyone else, including IPOB themselves? And by IPOB here, we mean the IPOB leadership. And why does Simon Ipa hide his village of origin but wants to know the identity of a map powerful or have the picture of China Samoru? Those were created by Nam the Kano to be that way. Why do you think he wants the identities revealed? That's because he is working for the slave master. They tell him what they want him to get for them. And please do not forget that those that follow Simon Eba do not even know his village. So if you hear them asking about who is Ima Powerful, who is China Samoru, why don't they show their faces? Know that they are all agents of the slave master, working for the slave master. And if you doubt what we're saying, when they say that, ask them to tell you Simon Eba's village. You will see how they will start defending him. And please do not forget that the slave master's technique of using Simon Eba had been done in the past when he infiltrated the civil rights movement in the US. 
and he also infiltrated the Negro Improvement Association. And when he infiltrates, he creates a conflict that will destroy the movement, which is what he's trying to do with Simon Eba. If you notice, Simon Eba keeps claiming he has expelled the leadership. Now ask yourself, how can any sensible person tell you he has expelled the leaders of an organization he is not even part of? And for those who claim he is part of it, tell us which family of IPOV Simon Eba came to and joined the movement from and where he has paid his dues ever before. And that's before we talk about where he is getting the temerity to say he has expelled the leadership. And don't get this wrong and don't misconstrue it. If you don't understand why the slave master wants to destroy IPOB, let us tell you why. Remember, when he kidnapped Nandekano, there was an Uchemefo that kept the movement together. He learned from that. And that was why he got Uchemefo first, this time before kidnapping Nandekano. But this time, the DOS is trying to keep the movement together. Hence, he is now trying to use Simon to destroy that DOS. This is why you see Simon attacking the DOS. That's what he does. If you doubt us, tell us one blackmail he has done against Nigeria. And we will tell you 50 that he has done against IPOB and its leadership. And again, we ask you, what about the de facto government of Asare and Mefo? Where is that de facto government today? Don't you see that they are all now fully into the politics of the game? That was when they tried to infiltrate but failed before the slave master figured he could use Simon Epa to do it. And here is a flashback. Remember when we mentioned to you that those traditional religion adherents and native doctors on Facebook will at some point be attacked by the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices the moment they destroy IPOB. Please do not forget that. And remember the Igbo Loves Themselves Charity Foundation founder and chairman called Ejofo Isaac. Do you think the politicians with all the money do not see the victims he is helping out? Why do you think none of them see him or talk about him or even come to help him? And this question is actually for those who believe that there could be a good Nigeria or those who believe in the obedient movement. Our little question to you remains. How do you think the same people that have been responsible for whatever is happening in the area can also be the same that will save you from it? And so why do you think people like Pito be with their millionaire status do not ever come to help him at least to say, let us help some of these people you are presenting with genuine sicknesses? We shall tell you, but not in this video. But remember, all those politicians are handpicked by the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices. And on Omena Labuze Zogu and Ejofo Ezak, do you remember that when they started attacking in Nandekano, they claimed it was because of Biafra? Remember that? They will always try to tell you that it is because of Biafra, but it's deeper than that. Do not forget that people like Owazrike also claim to be fighting for Biafra, even Asare. So your question should be, why are they fighting in Nandekano but leaving those ones alone? And remember, your only answer is not that they are defending one Nigeria or because they are mentioning Biafra. And so, did you know that the program of Igbo Loves Themselves Charity Foundation slash Omena Labuze Zioku was shut down by the slave master and his accomplices hiding under Nigerian Broadcasting Compression NBC on the 11th of October 2022. So, permit us to ask you, why do you think they shut the program down and can you compare it with a similar thing that happened many years ago where the same NBC shut down a program discussing the Asaba massacre. Remember, if you are in Nigeria and you are not a Fulani, you are a slave. Whether you believe us or not, it shall become clearer with time. And so, have you wondered why they never attack pastors or imams for at least lying? and deceiving people. For example, when they tell you that an arranged or make-believe miracle could have happened, why do you think the police does not step in to correct such ills in the society? And the simple reason is because Islam, also called Mohammedanism and Christianity are the tools of the slave trade and designed to make the slave happy and the slave hunter emboldened. To continue his evil against his fellow humans. For example, remember that Azari Dorokobo claimed to have been fighting for Biafra, 
but today he is fighting for his Muslim brother to rule and now against supposedly his own people and that's if we assumed but without considering that he is not an immigrant to the area. Remember, he cannot claim to have been conscious and then suddenly embrace the slave master's religion, that is the religion used to enslave his forebears as his new religion. And let us not forget that England, that's Britain, and Arabs, that's including Fulanese, own both religions, and both were united in the evil of the slave trade, unfortunately.